You know, when I was in high school, I did a book report on this book. It was hard to read. The first part of the book, the first half of the book, was substantially different than the second half of the book. And the second half of the book was a sort of chastisement, a sort of excoriation. The book was called The Fixer by Bernard Malamud. Now, sometime later, I happened to read other books by Bernard Malamud, and not so ironically, last year I was looking for them. I wanted to purchase them. There was a triptych he wrote, a series of three books about the history of a family. I read them, all three of them. I loved them. They were great books. There's very few triptychs of such a sort that can sustain your attention all the way through. I found him to be a very fine writer, and I've always remembered that book. It made a very profound impact on me. Right now, there's information I just came across last night. I had not been apprised of it previously. Presumably, there's an organization I had not heard of. It identifies itself as the National Legal Defense Organization, uh, serving Israeli soldiers and civilians in Israel and the occupied territories. It discusses a place that I uh, identified at Kfar Duma and says that, at least currently, the information says that on July 31st of 2015, there was an incident involving a firebombing of a house. Now, one of the incidents that it discusses is describes that in the house were a couple with a baby. Now, if I'm not mistaken, on July 31st of 2015, I was in Honduras, and I was in a very difficult situation because there had been an incident that occurred on July 2nd, and as a result, the next day, on July 3rd, when there was supposed to be a festivity, and it was supposed to involve the whole school as an act of protest, I refused to attend. I saw something. After I saw this, I was called to the school on site. I had a discussion with the headmistress. We discussed what my concerns were, and she told me that there was going to be a meeting of the teachers and administrators later in the month, and at that time, if I wanted, I could present my proposal regarding the safety of students, specifically regarding searches of bags, and the permissions necessary in order to go through any of the students' items while they were at school. I composed the policy. I wrote it out. I had a minor student I was tutoring on site at the school. I requested he review it one day. This was before, by the way, July 31st. If I am not incorrect, that meeting took place on July 30th of 2015, at least in the place we were at, it would have actually been July 31st in Israel. Now, I'm concerned because I have right here something I found after I had attempted to go to a congregation here in Dallas. You see, I would actually tried to go somewhere else after there had been an advertisement about a community event. There, it seems, was a miscommunication. I had need to speak with the Attorney General's Office of Israel at that time. I asked if they could provide formal process. They weren't able to. They referred me to a congregation down the street I went, and lo and behold, just so happened that around that time they were advertising an event the name of the congregation, July 9th at 7.30 p.m., The Fixer by Bernard Malamud. In the multi-purpose room with, I suppose it would be a parishioner. Now, I did not attend at that time. There was another holiday, actually, that was set to occur in the month of November. I had hoped to go then, but something told me don't go yet. The problem is September 2015. If I am not incorrect, it was September 24th. See, prior to being made to leave the country, 
because I had been threatened with eviction if I did not agree to ingest mind-altering substances for no legitimate reason in front of my minor students on site at school. I had agreed to attend a meeting of a community that was associated with the family of one of my students I tutored, not the same student from before, mind you. But we had students at that school that lived in a campesino community right outside of the main center of the city. The day I would otherwise have been requested to have attended a meeting to discuss matters for the community, there was an incursion into the campesino. If I recall correctly, it resulted in the deaths of a baby. A little baby died. And there was at least one, if not two, adults that also died or were injured. Now, at the time it happened, my understanding is that it had been strategically called in consideration of a form of retaliation involving and against me directly and specifically that to this day has persisted. There is many, many, many other factors involved in this, including the fact that in January of 2015, a two-year period regarding the inception of an executive order concerning the financial capabilities of young Americans expired. And there was a, another period of time until September when there was another executive order involving the financial capabilities of Americans. And in between, there were some other entrepreneurial endeavors. Now, these events are not unrelated. As I identified last night and remarked on, the circumstances surrounding the allegations of the treatment of the individual involved are not isolated and unique. Is this an attempt to try to invert a paradigm connected to illegal underwriting that involved the confiscation from the public realm of information put into circulation via a publication that not only was well reputed in the community but had won awards for its coverage and that information upon confiscation was allowed to be used in illegal underwriting to finance acts of what were supposed to appear to be terrorism committed by individuals that were themselves orchestrated by state actors. I contend that's what this is. And the specifically disappointing part of this is that in the meantime, these processes of Playing out this sort of ceremony of ritual Jew shame and Jew hatred, including in manners that attempt to put some sort of standard of purity on who's allowed to be identified as a Jew for what period of time, have revealed an even more nefarious problem that goes all the way back to the 80s and is terming right now. This should have been discussed directly, candidly, and honestly before May 12th of 2021. There should have been somebody from any of the interests I just referred to directly, including in regards to the fact that I had actually contacted state agencies in at least three countries directly involved that would have spoken to the facts of these matters, including the alleged discrepancies, honestly and accurately until we got till now. See, four-year terms are very important, not only in terms of financing and international securities, but also in terms of politics, in terms of government functioning. 
And today is a four-year term, in part necessitated because of a refusal to address honestly and authentically premeditated acts of murder involving Israeli police officers and members of the United States military. And four years later, the question of under what authority did other acts occur has led us here. Do we understand the profundity of the situation here? We're not just talking about libel, which, by the way, is in the Bill of Rights of the Texas Constitution and is compounded by abuse of the judicial process in altering court records or allowing for intentional misrepresentation of the actual facts of the matter in order to engage derivative litigation, including in connection with efforts to obstruct justice in actual capital crimes. It would behoove somebody here in Dallas to stop threatening in the background to engage in some continued process of religious persecution 